Hi, and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today, we're concluding part two of our CSS Sprite navigation bar tutorial. Last week, James prepared the Sprite graphic, so today we'll be explaining the coding you'll need to complete your navigation bar with the simplest and minimal amount of HTML and CSS. So now that our Sprite is prepared, let's immediately look at the HTML required for our CSS Sprite navigation. I've got an example page set up here in Dreamweaver, and you can probably see that I've increased the typeface size of the code view. That's just purely to make the video as legible as possible. So I usually contain my navigation bars within an unordered list. They're the UL tags that contain the ally tags, which are individual bullet points. Uh, there's quite a few advantages to styling your navigation bar with unordered lists and bullet points. Um, firstly, it's good for SEO, gives uh, the search engine bots a nice structured format to crawl the individual navigational elements of your website. And secondly, the formatting that you can apply to the uh, lists and unordered list tags gives you all the flexibility that you need to uh, arrange everything according to your design. So as you can see, I've already made a bit of a start. Um, I've just got this uh, basic page and we're just purely going to make the navigation bar on this page just to keep things clear and simple. So I've opened the UL tags and I've given my navigation bar the ID of navigation. Obviously you can call this whatever you like. You might find it easier to also call it navigation, particularly if you're copying and pasting the code from the supporting blog post. Now if I just flick back to Photoshop, I've got a copy of my navigation bar sprite that we had last week. And you'll see I've got um, home, about us, chairs, so on. So what I need to do is create a bullet point for each individual navigation button. I need to give each one a class, a, a unique class. So home, for example, I've called home. And then within each bullet point, I've created a link. And again, just because obviously this is a demonstration, I'm just linking my um, buttons to hash, which doesn't go anywhere. So obviously put in the URLs of your, of your actual web pages. So within the link, then obviously we've got home, and this is going to be the real text, or if you're hiding your text and using the graphic, this is the information that the search engines and users will see. So I've made my way down and created uh, the exact same thing for each individual segment of the navigation bar. And that just leaves me with one final one to do for the contact page. So I'm going to give that the class of contact. I'm going to open up the anchor tags or the link tag. I'm going to call this page contact. OK, so that's the HTML finished, nice and simple. So just to recap, we've got an unordered list tag containing bullet points, ally tags. Each one's got a unique class. And I've just uh, called them home about us so they're specific, so that I know exactly which ones are which. And then I've got my corresponding um, page name, the link, which ref is reflected in my design. Each one's surrounded with a link. And then we've simply closed the UL tag. So obviously, make as many bullet points as you need for the individual buttons on your navigation. And if you want to get started and you're using our example, just simply copy and paste uh, this code rather than trying to squint and retype it, um, copy and paste it from our supporting blog post. OK, so as you can see, I've attached a style sheet to the page, and I've got that in Dreamweaver here on a separate page. So I'm going to talk quite quickly to in order to squeeze this uh, tutorial inside the uh, slot that we can have on YouTube. So like I said, everything can be copy and pasted off um, our supporting blog post, and I'll also see if I can get the video guys to speed up some of these segments where I'm just doing some uh, repetitive tasks. OK, so the first thing that we need to do then is to style our navigation. So I'm going to create an ID, which is a hashtag of navigation. I'm going to open the curly braces. And first thing we're going to do is specify a margin of 0 and a padding of 0. We don't want any uh, margins or paddings on our navigation tab. These, this will sit in quite nicely into our uh, design at a later stage. First thing I want to do is specify the exact width of my navigation and thus the exact width of my sprite. And I want to do the same thing for the height. Now it's important with the height that you only specify half of the sprite, which would be the normal height of the navigation. Now we're going to reference the background image, which is going to be our sprite image. So I'm going to uh, browse and find this. And for the example, I'm going to use 
uh, without text. So this is the version we made um, last week that has the text excluded because we're going to add the text as real HTML text. That's our navigation ID finished. Next thing we're going to do is style the individual links within our unordered list tag with the ID of navigation. So any subsequent bullet points within navigation. Again, we're going to have margin zero, padding zero. Now here comes the first part that we're going to make the bullet points sit in line. Because if we just quickly jump to the design view, you'll see that we get the ordinary normal bullet points listed out. So we need them all to float next to each other. So that's um, list style type. We'll specify none to get rid of the bullet points. We're going to display in line, and that's going to allow them all to float next to each other. We're going to again specify the height of our bullet of our navigation bar, so that's 37 pixels. And also with my design, I want to align the text inside each bullet point, inside each segment, to the center. We're going to float each bullet point left so that again they all sit next to each other. I'm also going to specify the line height of the text within my navigation bar. So this is going to be the exact height of the navigation bar so that I know my text will sit perfectly in the vertical alignment. And I'm also going to do a little bit of styling. Um, I'm going to specify uh, Georgia as my typeface for my uh, font on my navigation bar. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is style the navigation links. So we're going to again create the navigation ID and specify the A tag. We're going to go display block, which will mean that the entire portion of the uh, bullet point will be a link, which is quite important. So that's the whole area rather than just the text. Okay, I'm going to specify the height as 37 pixels just to make sure. And while I'm here, I might as well specify my text color for my navigation. So I think the overstate is 311F11 uh, from memory. Text decoration, none, so I don't want my text to underline when I hover over it. Let's perhaps specify font size, 13 pixels. I can always refine this at a later stage. So that's my basic navigation A-link styling complete. Now let's do the hover state. So we're going to go navigation A and then specify hover, so when someone hovers over a link in the navigation bar. And the second time, we're going to again reference our background sprite image. This is quite important. So let's just copy and paste that again just there. And let's specify our hover over real text color. So let's uh, maybe do white. OK. That's all the generic styling that we need for our sprite navigation bar. And if we check in and go to the live design view, you'll see that our links are all sitting quite nicely in line for a little bit of styling and now we just need to sort of sp uh, spread them out accordingly and specify that when we hover over we get the overstate. So now we've got to individually break down each of the bullet points within our navigation. So let me start with the first one. So again I'm keeping this within our navigation ID. First bullet point as you know is home. We've specified the class in the HTML, so li class equals home. So we have a dot for a class, so we specify the home bullet point. Now, you need to work out the individual widths of your navigation bar. You can do this in Photoshop by selecting the uh, marquee tool, select a region of your design, and then using the info tab, you can quite clearly see how uh, the widths of your selection are made up. So if you write them all down or note them down on your computer, add them all up, and you should find that they should add up to the um, overall width of your navigation bar. So the first one then is the home and the width I know is 71 pixels. I'm going to copy this again. I'm going to also specify now the overstate because this will allow me to reveal our um, hovered over state of our navigation. So navigation the link with the uh, class home, the hover state. Don't need to specify the width again. 
what we do want to do is specify the background position. So this is the position of our background sprite image. Now I'm going to specify 0 pixels on the x-axis. On the y-axis I'm going to align the image to the bottom. So this will slide our sprite up to reveal the layer below. So let's check in on the design view and hopefully you'll see that our first button is already working. That's simply revealing the sprite layer below. So back to the code and we essentially now need to make the second one. So I'm just copying and pasting it and changing home to about. Now the width of my about button is 94. And if at this stage I was to go and check out the design view, you'll notice that the the slide is not uh, sorry on this on the second layer on our about it's not moving the sprite over. It's just resetting it back to the start. This is because we need to specify now a x-axis position to match this up. Now to do this, we need to remove the width of the first portion, the home one. So the first one we know is simply going to be minus 71 pixels. That will slide the sprite across into position 71 pixels, which was the width of our first button. Now we simply need to repeat this process for each individual um, list in our navigation bar. So next it's chairs. Now to get the background position of this one, I simply need to take this minus 71 and then subtract the previous one, which is 94. So 71 plus 94 is minus 165. So this the value of the next one is simply the value of the previous one along with its respective width. Now I'm just going to do this one more time before we speed up the process. So after chairs is chaises. And the width of the chaise button is 84 pixels. So I'm taking this value here and I simply just need to add on the previous width. So 165 plus uh, 94 is minus 241. So let's just repeat this now and finish off our navigation bar. Okay, so that's the last one then, the contact list, and we can go on to the design view and simply hover our mouse over and check that each individual bullet point lines up perfectly with its respective background. So really it's as simple as that. Um, obviously our tutorial is based on having fixed widths for your navigation bar. And if you simply wanted to um, not have real text like we have here in the example, uh, let me show you how we could do that. So. As you know, in part one, we prepared a with text version. So let's just swap that in the two locations. And you'll see here in the live view, we get the uh, background with the text and the real text on top. So it's very straightforward to remove the real text. We do need to do one more class. So navigation ID, ally, and we can actually add a span and display none to hide the text. I to then do a simple find and replace and add in span tags so replace all and then close the span tags so it simply added an opening span and a closing span tag for each of my uh, bullet points. Go to the design view and you'll see that I've removed the text but the great thing is from the search engine perspective the uh, keyword rich text is available for search engines to crawl your pages. So there's the two different versions for your navigation bar. Hopefully you can use these to help with your sprite navigation.
Thank you for watching this week's video. If you have any questions, comments, or contributions, please leave them on our supporting blog post.